Hey everyone, so in the past, let's say two weeks, I've been asked so many times to release a video on the final boss. Well, for obvious reasons, I did not want to repeat what happened, the one, the last Dark Visions where I actually participated in, as you might know, I did not participate in the August one, I believe that it was, where the magic stage was just basically uncapable unless you had very, very specific units at EX plus 3 and level 130, and I just didn't feel like it. And technically speaking, I would have not participated in this Dark Visions as well, outside getting the um, uh, Adventure Crest Pass stuff. But then I realized, well, I do have the perfect units to make this actually a top 10 team. Now, I did get some help from Uwe Bonnick, uh, a good friend of mine. He, uh, he showed me his team, which I'm super thankful for. Uh, we brainstormed uh, some of the things uh, that I couldn't do because I don't have a second da um, Dazzling Demoness card. And yeah, he helped me a lot to find the team that is almost on par with his, though he has a much higher variance range than I do, and his average is also much higher than mine. But still, I managed to get pretty close to his score, which I find very cool. So huge shout out to Ubu Bonik for helping me out on this one. Um, if you're watching this video, which is going to be uh, uploaded once maintenance starts, uh, my score, my final score will differ a little bit. Reasoning is I have been banking score. It's not that much. It's honestly 500 points. Um, I actually plan to score uh, to to bank about 10,000 points, but I forgot that my units actually hit hard on these freebie stages, so I accidentally capped this fight. But oh well, I'm still have I still have 400 points more, so don't get confused. I did not uh, I did not run this again uh, ever since I post or made this video. It's almost 8 p.m. The clock is wrong on this one. Uh, so yeah, I got my new high score today. My new high score is, let me uh, put up the screenshot on my end. I, I'm just too much of a boomer to do this for you guys, but I do have my high score, uh, the damage details, etc., in the comment below the like button. So you should check that one out. And I did 35.525 billion damage. And um, I would suggest that you open up the screenshots right now so you can follow me along. So uh, on this team, we can uh, briefly check uh, the team. Uh, I'm using this one. So Fina did 456 million, uh, which is fairly close to the maximum. Uh, it should be around 570 million. Uh, still far ways off. Um, next up is Olive at 7.8 billion damage. She goes up to 8.3 billion damage, so that's pretty close to being maxed out. 500 million missing. Now, Small Bears is the actual one who rolled real well. So, Small Bears is at 11.296 billion, the maximum is 11.428 billion. So it's basically just 132 million missing from the maximum damage he could do. That's the best damage I've ever seen on him. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, Kuja, mine is only EX plus two, keep that in mind, uh, 2.4 billion. His max range was 3.4 billion. So there's lots of headroom on his side of things but yeah I, I technically could roll for 36 billion that pretty much would require this run yet again plus Kuja rolling 1 billion more yeah no <laughs> uh, Sukiko is at 3.672 billion her maximum is 3.781 so she too is super super close to max rolling this and lastly Surge now Surge is a single hit unit so his max damage is the single hit damage cap of 9.9999999 etc billion and he did not quite cap it out so usually and you will see this in the clear coming up uh, he does have one hit um, from Luminaire 
and that one usually deals between 60 to 80 million so you have to deduct that amount and we'll check uh, or I can't check, check sadly but let's say he almost capped meaning uh, this was a super super good run it is I believe a 92 percentage um, average variance run which is pretty sick uh, and it took me about 800 rolls 772 at the point or at the time of making this video once i kill it it is going to be 773 so that is pretty pretty good of a roll now as for the ranking um, many of you have noticed that the top 100 they seem to be very very good players in fact uh, because they all share rank one those are all cheaters the real rank ones are basically um, Mood4 aka Uwe Bonnick, the one who helped me out quite a lot. Then there's obviously Robot DA, our super whale. Um, next up, for the time being, at, at the point in time of making this video, I'm currently ranked third, which is cool, but I don't think I'll make it to top three or top five. There's the Chinese guy whose letters I cannot read, I don't speak Chinese sadly. But he is also legit one. The next ones are fake or cheaters, the two of them, AMA and the other Chinese letters guy. Demian is currently fourth, but he is, uh, if you've been around for a while, he is a variance god, so I fully expect him to surpass me by uh, the end of the main, uh, or the start of the maintenance, the end of Dark Visions. But he is legit, obviously. Ultimav is one of the next cheaters. And then for the rest of the Four that we see here, Stevo 2 m Kaknex, Roxas, and D-Money, aka Trap. Those are all legit players. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of cheaters, even in the top 10 currently. So it's kind of sad that it's come to this, but I'm just hoping that Gumi will ban them all. Um, not sure what the point is. So in the top 10, there is actually, or from the top 10, there is actually one, two, three cheaters, uh, Ultima of AMA and... Uh, the number 138 at this point and the rest of us are legit so that's so much for the intro the gearing um, so Fina everybody want level 130 this obviously is not a cheap run as you might have guessed when I'm top 3 right now so Fina a Furion's bow fully built for attack now, she only has 4,770, uh, but that's about it. Titus is garb. Not sure why I put this on her. Um, but yeah, there it is. A 5.5x cap. Now, if I had two copies or three copies in total of Regina's STMR, Ultimate Regina, I would have given her two. Because Ultimate Regina's STMR actually stacks, so you can use two copies and you are at 6x cap. I don't have that, sadly, and all the Clash pieces are obviously on the high DPS units. So this is the build. Um, she is also on the Hyo card, which is going to be very important for the ending. And she thankfully has a 300% beast killer, which is very nice for this case. Next up, all of standard stuff. She has exactly 10,000 magic, which is very cool. Um, easily gears for a beast killer as well. So she has 300 beast, maxed out LB. We don't need LB fill on her. And she is on the Sage card, which uh, I actually pulled for, as you might have noticed or seen. Next up, Swole Bess. Uh, he has most of the good stuff. Is on 4th Nirvana. I did actually look it up that I have the right weapon equipped this time. As free Clash pieces, my only Ultimate Regina STMR. And a Magic Boost Plus, which is very important on him. So he's got 300 beast, rest doesn't really matter here. Uh, 6,410 MP and he is obviously on the Demoness card. Next up is uh, Kuja in base form. He is passive provoking. I also gave him anti-DK uh, amulet for the first three turns, which are important. This one uh, also boosts resistance to parameter reductions, all stat reduction. We're gonna need that for turn three, so it's perfectly fine that it only lasts three turns. That's exactly what we need. So uh, full passive provoke evasion, so he doesn't take any real damage. I also get him for lots of bulk. He has 2,400 uh, defense uh, in base form, which is important. And he is on 
the uh, die card. Now this is the brave shift, full on a DPS, uh, as good it is, as it gets pretty much. And he sports, let's see, 300 LB damage, 300 magical beast. He has to give for magical beast because it's uh, LB is actually magic typed. Next up, Sukiko. As you can see, she's on a Dark Reigns card. And this is what she's sporting. In base form, she is also another passive provoker uh, with magic boost. And what's important, and you will see why, is 10,000 needles. And the Brave Shift. So this is her stuff. Pretty good, I'd say. So she sports uh, maxed out everything, Esper damage, Evo damage, the two important parts here. Uh, doesn't really need anything else. So she was rather easy to gear and it was not necessary to give her um, the, uh, the the other demoness card, which whose name I forgot. So this is just more magic, which is good enough. And then Surge, uh, he has uh, the second best gearing of this team because he's the second highest DPS. So he's got his own STMR. Uh, I wrote this for magic and some MP. Uh, I could have gone for more magic, but he has, it was close, but it was good enough. So um, this is the gearing, two clash pieces, Flora hairpin. Um, and very important, I cannot click this one, the game will crash otherwise, but Element Magnify is his own LB modifier increase. Very important to have this, so that's nice. Also Hateful Agent for more stats. I think I have one more Hateful Agent on some of the unit or one of the units, I forgot to mention it probably. So yeah, that's the stuff. He also is on a Dark Reigns card and he sports maxed out LB, maxed out Beast Killer. And that's been it. So let's give this a go and see how we do this time. I do not expect to uh, cab or anything, but that's fine. I don't care anymore. I'm just happy that I made it this far. All right, so we're starting this off with Fina, who is going to shell go, double protect go. Uh, Olive is going to guard, Kuja is going to guard, Golbez is going to guard. And Surge is going to guard. Meanwhile, Sukiko is going to fox his Karma Solar Flare three times. So guard, 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 this, that, and Buddha with turn one. Okay, Boz does only one single attack every turn, which is totally fine. So Fina on this turn is just going to, we're going to press reload because we can reload Fina. Olive on this turn is going to uh, Summer Shot, Fury Splash, uh, Brilliant Splash, which are mainly here for the attack defense and, atta and magic spirit breaks, but most importantly the magic and attack breaks and the rest doesn't matter. So we'll do um, Beast Killer and the other killer stuff. Swolbes can st still guard. Uh, Kuja is going to do Enlightened Tenacity. He needs 100% Fire Resistance, which he doesn't have. He, no, Wind Resistance, excuse me. He has that, but we do want to make sure it's absolutely uh, maxed out. So I can do this. There's nothing else he could do. And we're going to shift back Sukiko and use 10,000 Needles. Reason is, on turn 3 the boss does a single AOE physical, physical attack and nobody of these units is actually full evading, so we need one evasion stack. And Surge on this turn is going to use Element Magnify, the white materia. So he has his modifier increase, it lasts 5 turns, if you do this on turn 2, by turn 6 you will be fine. So let's fire this stuff up. I didn't see how much damage Surge did, or anybody did for that matter, but it's fine. So there's the single attack, there's the arrow, we resisted it fully. Alright, turn 3, the game crashed, awesome. The SLB activation is super cool, it crashes the game. Especially when you have multiple units um, activating their SLB at the same time. I do have 3 units, no 4 units even. Yeah, four units activating the SLB at the same time. Swolbis, Olive, Fina, and Surge. <sighs> so we gotta wait. Uh, 
I hope you guys enjoyed while we wait. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, near live stream. I wasn't able to catch it live, but I checked it out later on. Love to be in A2. Uh, very curious to see if uh, A2 can finally break the SLB curse and be somewhat decent. But my hopes are that 2B is going to be enough and good enough because I'm a huge fan of Nier Armada, so I will pull a lot on uh, on that banner. Hoping that both EX plus 3 for less than 240k, which is my my current Lapis Dash. I still have the entire hero pass to, to do. I still have all of the mocking stuff to do, so literally everything I did so far was running variants. All right, we're back, so let's hope the game doesn't crash with the SLB activation. All right. There we go. The game finally caught up. So we're going to SLB with Fina. We're going to SLB with Olive. Um, we will use Swolbes' modifier increase. Uh, give your power to Meteor. It is a super, super high 3x modifier to Meteor. But if you want to min-max, you got to take it all. Now Kuja is going to use my time is up, uh, it's almost up, which is his 89% spirit break, but we only really care for the 160 light imperil and the 35% rod imperil here. Sukiko on this turn is going to um, a prayer of purification, a prayer of protection for Kuja, and a purging mandala light. And Surge is going to Luminaire. Now, the uh, the order here is very important. So we're going to click Surge first. That is going to put up the field yet again. Now we're going to click Sukiko to replace the enemy side of field for our Imperial field. That way we retain the 30% um, magic and physical light uh, amplification 30 percent which is exactly the same amount that fina has so we don't need behemoth on fina and can give it to a better dps now we just send an olive and swolbes and do kuja stuff and uh increase f stats by 400 percent lb damage by 300 percent with fina which lasts for the remainder of this fight okay so here's the AoE attack, we miraged it, easy peasy. The boss also did all stat break on Kuja, but because his uh, item, the tentacle, is, was still active, he resisted it, which is very nice. So this turn, Fina is just going to Shelga and double protect guy again. Olive is um, going to use uh, Secret Sage Art for the 100% light amp on turn 6. Swolbes is going to magic boost plus. Sukiko is going to use magic boost plus. Uh, Surge is going to death chrono cross. No apparent reason, honestly, it only unlocks quad cast. We're not gonna ever need it, but so be it. And uh, Kuja needs to guard on this turn because on this very turn, the boss is going to use an accuracy attack that hits fairly hard and we can minimize the damage taken off it. So here's butt kick, which hits always, arrow kick, and here's the attacks. We only took 2.2k damage. We are allowed up to 5k, but if you don't guard him, he will take a lot more damage and that might ruin your score. All right, turn five is the preparation turn. As you might've noticed, we have never imbued the party so far, so we are going to use Brilliant Veil right now. We are also going to prepare Olive. So Fury Splash, Brilliant Splash, Mammals Machines, which is her uh, own, what is it? Or is it 200% Beast Killer buff? Then Gunner Guardian, no actual reason, honestly, just one more action. And Fire Cannon Fire Last, which is her 500% Magic Store. Swolbes and Sukiko will magic boost yet again. 
third is going to fill LB, which is also another source of amplification, 150%. He will def again and chrono cross, which is his personal 300% magic store. It also reduces cooldowns by one turn. I just put this on search himself, so that's fine. And lastly, uh, Kuja Brave Shifts. So Sukiko in base form takes over passive provoking this turn. And he's just going to fill LB, True Flare Star. We don't want to use True Seraphic Star to, to push the boss below 50. And it's time to die everyone, which is also another source of uh, Magic Star, 300% for himself. So everybody's set and ready to go. So let's just click, 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 click. And let's click Fina last. And now we're pretty much ready to burst. All right, game didn't crash, perfect. So Fina is going to Blazing Red Flash, Yo's card. Uh, Olive is going to use her SLB. Swolbez is going to use Meteor. Um, Brave Shifted Kuja is going to use his LB. Sukiko is going to Brave Shift and use her Unlock Skill Shining Karmic Retribution. If you recall, we did Fox's Karma Solar Freer three times at the beginning. So this unlocks the Shining Retribution. And Surge is going to SLB as well. Now the timing on this is very, very iffy and it might break on this video because my PC is super, super old. And let me actually just pretty much close uh, Chrome. And let me close Firefox as well. Close as many uh, other things or other programs so it doesn't lag out. I do want to showcase what this ha uh, what this does properly. So we are looking at a 170 chain, 17 chain. We're starting off with Fina and Olive. Now Olive does not apply the 90% break instantly. I found it to have a 200 to 300 millisecond um, activation time frame. So do not send Swolbez and Surge ever. This, this does not only include this fight, but ever right after Olive. Neither of them will benefit from the 90% break. You have to wait just a few seconds. And the tricky part is if you do that, you also have to time Kuja and Sukiko, uh, who have two different bolting strike frames because Kuja has Suda frames, which is bolting strike variant two, meaning it's somewhat delayed. And Sukiko after that. Now Sukiko has to be clicked 284 milliseconds after Kuja. That way you can guarantee a perfect bolting strike chain. Now let's see if this works. Uh, last time I tested it, uh, when I tried to record this, it did not work, but let's see. So as you can see, we'll see, left hand side starts and then we'll see the rest. So here it is. All right, chain keeps going. Yep, it did not work, but it usually does work um, I cannot fix this for recording, but yeah, we would have dealt about 30 billion and it should have been a 117 chain. I'll leave it at it as is. I cannot fix this when recording. It works perfectly fine when I'm not recording. Uh, the strain on my PC is just too big for this to work. So be it, I guess. So this is the damage dealt. You can add about 3 billion. Yeah, it's 3.2, 3.2, 3 billion. So he would have dealt about 10 billion damage, Gobas, which is, yeah, it's fine. And as you can see, I had a very high roll on Fina this time, a rather low roll on Olaf, a decent roll on Kuja, a decent roll on Sukiko, and a very bad roll on Surge, which, yeah, that's variance. And I'm happy that I don't have to roll variance anymore. It's kind of annoying. So yeah, that's been it pretty much. That has been my team, and I think I've lost another rank while we were at it, which is fine. It's gonna happen anyway. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope that you guys still enjoyed this video and the strat. And yeah, next up is Vision World. I hope it's capable. Uh, the last one was capable. So if it is, if the Final Fantasy VII Vision World is capable, I will obviously make videos. 
And if it isn't, I'm sorry to say that I will most likely hide the final boss straight again. Uh, don't think, I, I really hope, because it has been only one single vision world, the very first one, that was not capable. All the other ones have been capable. And Gumi also changed the uh, Legend of Mana, the last one we had, to be capable. So maybe they'll do it again, please, pretty please. And yeah, so yeah, that's been it. Thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of the evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're from. We'll see each other for Neopods on Thursday. Bye-bye.